Thai red curry with chicken. It is so full of amazing flavors. Sweet, spicy, savory, creamy. It is our go-to curry dish when we order Thai. Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's get started. The first thing we need for our curry is the paste, the red curry paste. Now in the past, we've always purchased store-made paste, but tonight I thought we'd go ahead and make it ourselves. Now you might be asking, why am I making paste from scratch? I want to know what goes into this curry because it's so flavorful. I really want to explore all of the ingredients that go in it. And as you can see, there are a lot of ingredients that go into this paste. And that's what makes it so phenomenal. If you get a chance, I encourage you to try making it yourself. It's very simple and I'm going to show you how to do that. Traditionally, the paste is made in a heavy duty mortar and pestle, but we don't have that. So with experimentation, we've determined the process that works for us. The first thing we need to do is grind our white peppercorn and coriander seed. And we're gonna use a, a spice mill to do that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a food processor to kind of start the process of grinding our ingredients. And then we're gonna finish it off in a blender because that's what's going to help create that paste consistency. As always, all of my recipe ingredients are listed in the description below. Okay, so I've got my spice mill ready for me, and in this, I'm going to grind my coriander seed and white peppercorn. All right, here goes the coriander seed, white peppercorn, and we're gonna turn this on. All right, that looks really good. The next step is to put all of my ingredients that I've prepared in my food processor before it gets finished in the blender. Okay, so these were um, Thai red chili peppers that were dried, they're very spicy. We took all the seeds out of these. And then this is just a mild red pepper. This is used for the bright red color of the curry. I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt to this because the coarseness of the salt is gonna help break down the pepper. Okay, so if you take a look, the peppers are still really coarse um, and that's to be expected with the food processor. The next thing that's going to go in are my tougher um, herbs, I guess you'd say. So let me show you. These are galango. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. It's actually part of the ginger and turmeric family. And I have gone, gone ahead and just roughly chopped them up. That's gonna go in. And then the next one is um, lemongrass. Let me show you what that looks like. Lemongrass looks like this. Um, it's, it has a citrusy scent to it. It's really lovely. Also roughly chopped because it's all gonna go in here. Okay, the next thing that's gonna go in is garlic, shallots, cilantro stems, because I could not find cilantro or coriander root, fresh chilies, and this is kefir lime leaves, and let me show you what that looks like. It looks like this. It has such an amazing aroma. This definitely needs to go into the paste. It's all gonna go in and get processed. The last few things that are gonna go in are my coriander uh, seed and white peppercorn. This is paprika, because it's also gonna bring out that really nice red color. And then the last thing that goes in is shrimp paste. Okay. All right, as you can see, the food processor did its job and blended as much as it could, but it is still a little bit choppy. It's not fine, it's not a paste. We're gonna transfer this into our blender. It's done. Now it took a little bit of time and because we're not using a mortar and pestle, you do need to add some oil in the blender to get it all going. So it took about 10 minutes to blend. It's not perfect because you can't get it the consistency like you would do with mortar and pestle, but it's pretty darn good and it's gonna taste amazing in the curry. Okay, the paste is done. Now it's time to make the actual curry. Tonight, the protein we're using is chicken, but you can make this with anything. You can use pork, beef, shrimp, tofu, 
And as far as the vegetables, you can pretty much put anything in there you want, but we're putting in zucchini, bamboo shoots, and the red bell pepper. And then we're gonna add the Thai basil at the end to finish it off. All right, so the first thing I need to do is pour in half of my coconut milk and bring it to a boil. All right, the coconut milk has come to a boil, so now I'm going to add my curry paste that we made earlier. Look how pretty that color is. All right, we're gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna cook this until it thickens. Oh my gosh, it smells so good already. This is so exciting, wow. Okay, so the coconut milk and the curry paste has been cooking for quite a while. I've been constantly stirring. As you can, as you can see, it's gotten pretty thick. Sometimes you'll see the oil from the coconut milk separate on the bottom, but this particular one did not, and that's okay. Each coconut milk, depending on the brand, is a little bit different. But what we're looking for is that it is well incorporated. Now at this point, we're gonna add my chicken. We're using chicken thighs tonight. We're also going to add the rest of my coconut milk. Let's get all of that milk in there. And chicken stock. All right, so all of the ingredients have been put in the pot and we're gonna bring this to a boil and let cook for about eight to nine minutes. I almost forgot, I need my fish sauce and some sugar. So I'm gonna start out with about a tablespoon of fish sauce and about half of my sugar. Okay, it's been simmering now for about eight minutes and look at the color and you can see a little bit of the oil has um, separated. This is what I'm going to add my vegetables. So I'm adding bamboo shoots. I'm gonna also add my zucchini and my kefir lime leaves. We're going to let that cook for an, about another five minutes or so. All right, at this point, I'm gonna give it a taste to kind of see what my seasoning is like and whether it needs anything else. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more fish sauce to this. Maybe another half tablespoon and a little bit more sugar. This is a clean spoon, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more taste to make sure it's good. Mm, it's really good. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and then I'm gonna add my red pepper and Thai basil. Bring it over here. There's a lot of Thai basil in this, but I love the flavor. If you can't find Thai basil, don't put regular basil in there. It's a different flavor profile and it will not work with this. Just leave it out. It is done. Mm, it's so exciting, it looks so good and it smells amazing. Okay, our curry is done. I'm really happy with the way it came out. The first time we made our paste, it was a little bit too yellow and a little bit too watery and it just didn't work. But I think we really got it this time. It's a vibrant red color and it smells amazing. So it's now time to give it a taste. Look at all the pretty colors. I'm all about colors, the way it looks. And it looks and smells amazing. Let's give it a taste. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. It is so good, so, so good. I do not have to order this at a restaurant anymore. <laughs> and I know all the ingredients that have gone in, it's fresh. I'm gonna go for another taste. Mm, mm, mm. Give the recipe a try, really easy to make. And once you've gotten the red paste, down, you can use that as a base for a lot of Thai dishes. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment because I love hearing from you. And please subscribe and press that notification bell so you will be notified when I upload my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!